Well, it didn't take long. Within 48 hours of running away, 15-year-old Tawan McCarty met her first pimp. The 10 years of being sex trafficked then followed, but Tawan's story doesn't end here. Finally, she found the way out. When Tawan McCarty was only three months old, her father was sent to prison. For me, that meant that love meant pain really early on. But I couldn't understand if he loved me and wanted me why he wasn't there. Tawan's view of God brought no comfort. God was hellfire and brimstone. You do this, you're going to hell. You do that, you're going to hell. I saw my father not emotionally there and or physically there. And I saw my heavenly father, he wasn't there either. When Tawan was 12 years old, a family friend sexually abused her. During the next three years, she ran away repeatedly and was in and out of foster care and group homes. I don't think I was running from anything. I think I was running to find something. I think there was so much missing in my life that there was a hole, and I didn't have any clue what the hole was. At the age of 15, Tawan ran away for good. Within the first 48 hours, I can't pinpoint the exact time, is when I met my first pimp. I mean, he approached me, and I mean, I had to take care of myself. I, ne I needed to eat, and he was really, really nice and very attractive man, and said, I'll teach you how to take care of yourself. Or he actually had four girls living with him. Within the first few weeks, Tawan's pimp taught her how to sell cocaine. But in a short time, his demands increased. And then it went to the dancing. There was a night he told me to go to the truck stop. And I had to come back with so much money. That was when it started. Because he told me I had to come back with more money than I had drugs. So I knew I had to do what I had to do to make the money if I wanted to go home. Tawan eventually became addicted to the drugs supplied by her pimp. I started brainwashing myself to cope. And I started reinforcing what they were telling me that it was my choice. And it, I was just a dope fiend and a whore and a prostitute and nothing else mattered. I never looked in my eyes. I just made sure physically that I looked the way I was supposed to look, the way I needed to look to do what I needed to do. Her pimp eventually began trafficking her all over the United States. I've been to every state but Alaska and Hawaii in a truck, and I've been to Canada and Mexico too. As a teenager, there, there was a group of us that they would take on circuits, and the biggest circuit that we went on was Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, Memphis, and Chattanooga. I remember going to the Kentucky Derby, but I never went into the Derby. I remember a table of pimps sitting down and talking about the Olympics. Trafficking, pimping, prostitution, the whole industry is very, very organized. Over the next 10 years, the violence of the men she encountered left Tawan with emotional and physical scars. My throat has been cut. Guns placed in my head, the trigger pulled. I have no clue how many times I've been raped. And I'm not talking about the paid rapes that happen every day. I'm talking about brutal rapes. Rapes that you don't know if you'll live through or not. I have no clue. When she was arrested at the age of 26, Tawan finally saw a way out. After prison, she went through a 12-step program. Determined to overcome her past, Tawan eventually went on to earn a bachelor's degree and two master's degrees. Everything had to be perfect to prove that I wasn't the dope fiend and the whore and the prostitute, but there was still something missing. In 2009, she discovered the Birmingham Dream Center. Curiosity led her inside to ask about their programs. And there's this beautiful woman sitting behind this desk and she's, I said, what do y'all do here? And she starts telling me about Bible studies and all this stuff and I start gagging a little bit. And the last thing she says, oh, and I'm also trying to reach out to the prostitutes in the area. And this whole thing went off inside of me like, really, what are you doing? And she tells me, I'm like, oh, honey, no, it's all wrong. You're gonna, you're gonna get hurt. You can't do it that way. And she says, what do you mean? Do you know how to do it? And we start talking and she says, hold on a minute. She gets a notepad and we sit down and two hours later, 
She's taking all these notes, so at the end of it, she looks at me and she said, how do you know all this stuff? And before I could stop myself from saying it, I pointed out the windows that I used to walk the same street. Tawan started helping Lisa at the Dream Center with outreach on a regular basis. And what she did during that time was set an example. And she showed me what a Christian woman looked like and walked like and loved like. Because she showed unconditional love. And so I saw what Jesus really, really looked like because of her. So this one day she calls me and this lady's in there. And I remember I prayed. And all I prayed was, Lord, help me help her. I met Jesus. That moment I met Jesus, trying to help that girl. I didn't meet that man that they were talking about when I was little. The hellfire and brimstone. I met Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who loves us. Regardless of anything we do. Tawan says her life was completely transformed after her prayer. I see a picture of me, and I go, who is that girl? There's a complete transformation in the love he shows me through others and the love he gives me every day. I have a daddy. I don't, he's not just a father. He's a daddy. Today, Tawan is using her past to bring hope to the future of others. She runs a Christian rescue home for girls trapped in the sex industry called The Well House. To date, The Well House has rescued over 100 women, and Tawan continues to share her message with trafficked girls all over the globe. I am you. I have been there. I know who you are and what's going on inside of you. God rescues, and He redeems, and He restores. You are not alone and you are not unloved.